The story of Shimon Peres is the story of modern Israel. One of the longest serving politicians in Israel's history, Peres was there from the very beginning. During the War of Independence, he was responsible for buying weapons. He was briefly head of the Navy, established the country's aircraft industry, and during the 50s, founded the country's nuclear program. In government, he held virtually every major cabinet position and was prime minister three times, but never won an election. Many Israelis considered him aloof, an intellectual who wore a suit, not a uniform. He never got the public love that he was yearning for. He was never hugged by the populace of Israel as our leader. He was hated as much as he was loved. Norway said that Most of all, he was loved and hated for the 1993 Oslo peace process, which saw Yasser Arafat return from exile. Interesting body language. His name is attached to the Oslo peace accords, which were at the center of the polarization of Israeli society and political life. It won Perez the Nobel Peace Prize, but a wave of Palestinian suicide bombings and other attacks which followed left him struggling to defend the peace process. I know that we are moving on a road full of dangers, but I know also that this is the right road, the best road, the only road upon which we have to move. Ultimately, the increase in violence cost him the 1996 election. Israelis turned their backs on Perez in favor of the conservative Benjamin Netanyahu. I think there's a good chance we're going to win this race. Perez would often speak in terms of grand visions. I do believe that there will be a new Middle East. It earned him derision from some Israelis, but international acclaim. I'm very grateful to him for a lifetime of thinking big thoughts and dreaming big dreams and figuring out practical ways to achieve them. And he never stopped striving for peace. He believed in a two-state solution up until the very end. You know, I'm either too young or too old to pay, to pay too much attention to what people say. I would rather see what they do. And uh, maybe in the conversation, some people will say this and that, but the official position and the real desire of Israeli to have two states, an Arab state and a Jewish state. And I think that's also the conclusion of the Arabs. Of all the Palestinians, Saeb Erekat, the chief negotiator, may have known Perez the best. When I met him 25 years ago, I was a young professor, and I was angry with something. And he looked at me, and he said, Saeb, negotiating in pain and frustration for five years is cheaper than exchanging bullets. For five minutes. After nearly 50 years as a member of the Knesset, Israel's parliament, Perez became the country's president, serving until his retirement in 2014. But when asked how he wanted to be remembered, he didn't mention a life of civil service. I would like that somebody will write about me that they saved the life of a single child. This will satisfy me more than anything else. Perhaps a better answer came a decade earlier. I feel like a person that has served this country rightly and properly. And that is, in my judgment, the highest degree that a person can feel. On this day, there are few Israelis who would disagree.